Hey, hello friends, welcome back. This is Kelly Weiler and you are at Girl Upcycled Studio. Our studio is physically located in Zanesville, Ohio, and we absolutely love it when y'all drop in and we get to meet you in person and see your faces and talk to you. So put that on your list if you're ever coming through our town. So today I have a new project. This is actually a live intuitive art session that I taught in my private membership group. And I thought it would be fun to share with all of you here on YouTube so that you kind of see what the process is and you can see the transformation start to finish. Um, if you have any questions, as always, just put it in the comment section. I'm always happy to help. And as always, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification button so that you don't miss a video. Enjoy. I thought I would do things a little bit differently this time and I want to just walk you through an intuitive piece of art that I created. I actually created this inside my private membership group, the Creators Club. This was a class that I taught there and um, I usually teach intuitive art at least once a month among other classes throughout the month but we usually start the month off with intuitive which is, seems to be going over pretty well. Something I've been playing around with as I'm working on my own art process is starting my underpaintings with darker colors. So um, this is just kind of something new I've been playing with. Intuitive art, you kind of um, you kind of go on impulses is how the whole thing kind of starts off. So right now I'm just using my impulses and I'm using contrast. So I'm going with my darks and my lights and I'm creating a lot of shadows and a lot of soft, billowy kind of uh, blending is what I'm doing. I'm recording this at home right now so you may hear some interruptions from the animals. I think I, one of my cats just kind of popped in so that happens but um, real life huh? So I'm just continuing on. You're watching me as like I said, this was a class that I taught, so um, right now I'm showing one of my other intuitive pieces, and I often do that during my classes. I refer back to other paintings that I have done. If there's information I can give my students that may help them, um, so that's what I was doing right there when you saw um, where I popped up another painting that I was working on. So now I just grab the blue for whatever reason. Um, this is just a beautiful cobalt blue and it looks like I'm working in some white. A lot of times when I'm using white I, it's just gesso that I'm using and then I'm mixing it in with the existing color blue. So I'm really not knowing where I'm going to go right now. So that's um, as I'm talking to the students, I can't really remember what I was telling them. I'd have to watch the class over again and listen to it, but I'm, I'm often just talking them through the process, telling them how I'm feeling, where my mind is going. Um, sometimes I'm talking about my next move and how I feel like I, where I want to go. Um, so I just added a little bit of scraping, scraping in. Um, I'm using, I believe, a Catalyst um, paint knife. It's a silicone paint knife and it has a really soft um, kind of an edge to it, which is nice because it gives a nice soft scraping kind of a, an effect. So I'm still just playing around with it. I'm just not really having a big mission as to knowing where I'm going to go yet. So it's um, it's very much an adventure when you're painting intuitively. Um, you kind of are just kind of really um, getting in tune with yourself and it's kind of like a little dance actually that you're doing inside. Um, you're just kind of dancing with the paint and dancing with the feelings that you're having. You're kind of letting those colors guide you and um, the thing about the intuitive art process is not hanging on to something too hard and too harshly 
but um, just kind of being easy and letting the process happen. So a lot of times when you're doing this first layer, a lot of times you're covering over it. So sometimes you put a lot of layers on and you're not even seeing the, the most of that first layer. Um, but sometimes you do, so you just kind of, you never know when you're starting out. So right now I chose this beautiful yellow and so I know why I chose that was because I popped in some blues and greens. And so um, a great complement to the blues and greens are yellow. So I think that's why I just intuitively grabbed that knowing that you know those colors go beautifully together. So I'm really not sure where I'm going with it now. I'm in the middle of studying it and I'm just pouring water on it and I'm just wondering where it's going to go, if it's just going to be an abstract piece or if it's actually going to turn into something that is recognizable. So I think about here is where I kind of started feeling like they reminded me of sunflowers, which is so typical of me because sunflowers are my favorite. So um, I do paint them a lot. Sometimes I I don't always mean to, but sometimes I think it just I think that just comes out in your art. Um, things that you love just automatically will kind of happen. So people that love flowers, they are going to tend to gravitate towards florals when they paint. Um, just because it's that's what that's about when you're painting. It is about doing what you love, you know, and not holding back, just letting it out. Okay, so um, I've got a dropper bottle now that I'm using, and I'm just adding some brighter turquoise in it and I'm just making some small movements now because I'm trying to study it and figure out where I want to go next. Um, I know around this point it was bothering me the mid to right corner of this piece of art. I was thinking that it was a little off-centered and so you're gonna watch me now add some light to that area. Um, I had contemplated adding more flowers and more of the more of the yellow drips and stuff, but at some point here, I decided not to add more. Um, I really like the focal being just those three beautifully drippy sunflowers. I think that they just made a really good focal. So what I decided to do now was I added some deeper greens and so that is going to help that corner that I was unhappy with. So um, and it was the composition was off a little bit so this is helping me pull that composition of that painting together to where it's all going to be you know a little bit um, better for your eyes as far as when you look at it your composition is um, kind of set up I don't know I want to say kind of triangular when you're doing artwork um, but you want you want a focal point and then you want some space to where your eyes can kind of move around dance around a little bit so that's kind of what it was working on. So now I'm hopping back over into the florals and I added a little bit of warm tones, which warm means a little bit of red warmth. So that's what I added there. And I am just kind of really happy with where this is right now. And I think I'm really getting close to where I ended with my class. Um, I don't always get it completely finished when I'm working on the intuitive art, um, but I do try to talk them through it. And when I add um, the anything outside of the class, I try to um, let them see the end results. Okay, so I came back the next day when I had fresh eyes and was able to 
just kind of look at it and know that it needed just a little something more. So I went ahead and I took that brighter turquoise. That was a color called Old 57 and I used that dropper and I really had a lot of fun and just put some last finishing touches on it. So it really turned out well. I felt so good when I was done with it. And actually the painting itself has sold. It sold right away. And so um, it goes on to live somewhere else and hopefully make the new owner as happy as I was when I painted it. And that is what intuitive art is about. Letting your soul just kind of dance. I hope you enjoyed it. Hey guys, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And while you're at it, you want to make sure you hit the notification bell so you don't miss a video.